Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it is Wednesday, my dude. Why am I over here? There we go. I'm wearing my lovely sweater that has the nice high collar. <laughs> hey guys, who am I? I am an unsent. I love this thing, man. This needs to come up to here. I am an unsent. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's Final Fantasy X. Um, we're going to be playing some Magic the Gathering today because our good friend Kevin Purge Gamers Godek is out of town. Uh, and if, since he's out of town, this means that I would be needing to play a solo queue, and I'm not going to do that at all. I'm not going to do that. Why would I play solo queue in Dota 2? Playing solo queue in Dota 2 is like only eating half an Oreo. I want my other half to be able to have the complete sensation of Oreo, okay? That is my goal. Uh, so since Kevin's gone, I'm going to do a game that was built to be played solo, Magic the Gathering. And today, uh, we're going to be playing some different decks. Didn't have a lot of success with our homebrew yesterday. And there's really two conflicting goals that I'm feeling that I want to make sure that I'm properly dedicating to. Always so important. It's so important to know what emotional goal you have for the game that you're playing at the time. It's okay to be an ultra tryhard, working your way up the ranks, maybe to try to get onto a competitive team. That's great to do, as long as you know you're doing that. It's totally fine if you want to experiment, try out new things, try to do this. As long as you know that that's what you're doing. It's, oh, it's even great to fuck around, right? Just, get, just have a blast. Just have a blast. And then make sure you're not getting too upset if you wind up uh, losing a game, things like this. And I could I could feel myself sort of making an error in that yesterday. I wanted to win because I wanted to climb up. I also wanted to do my Naya homebrew, and I should have been more focused on one or the other. So what I think what I'm going to be doing today is being a little more deliberate about that thing to help do better emotional management and help with my proper experimentation when we're actually doing that. So I want to start off with a deck that... Um, is doing really well right now. Is it Drake's? And I'm going to just put in the big Drake's. Of note, four Enigma Drake's and four Crackling Drake's. In a moment, we'll talk about this deck, but this is the base core of it. I wanted to uh, give a few shout outs at the beginning. We got VWEM starting things off as usual, five gifted subs to FSU Knowles 00, Augmentat. Oh, I like that. Reepsu, Brassclaw, and Jay Wetzel. Thanks for going 109 sub gifts, VOM. You, Ninja Ginger. Rocking out so many as of late. Oh my god, that coffee's strong. I really crushed it today. Um, I'd also like to um, just give a warm welcome to all the folks here who are talking about how much they're happy about the cumulative resub amount as opposed to the consecutive resub amount. There's a number of people here who were at one, two, three month streaks, some six to 12 month streaks that upon this change are in the 50, 60, 70 month streaks, which is, which is fantastic. Uh, how many of you, how many of you had a big jump in your cumulative amounts? How many of you had a big jump? Like I see Dude Light has subscribed for 39 months total, currently on a 30 month streak. Who, it, like, and any resubs here at three plus years. Any resubs here at three plus years? x Cynic says I went from two months to two years. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Chango went up to a year from about three months. Oh, that's great here. Evil Penguin from six months to 25. Kitty Four Cats is up to 87 months. One of our mods here, Caroline. Good to have you here. Kai Herberts. Oh my god, Kai. What a guy. Here for 65 month Aronis. I just saw your email mid last week because I was really irresponsible about keeping up with my email. I owe you one, Kai. I owe you one. Red and Iris, 14 months. Self Destruct, 81. 51 months total. So, so happy to have my months back. God, that's a great feature. And I love that it's cumulative and consecutive because I feel like in, in just basic game design, providing people different goals to be able to focus on is a very nice way to just give great positive emotional reassurance. And the whole point of subscription is that it is a voluntary thing in order to, you know, create a more positive transaction between audience members and content creators. So I like that it. it's totally in tune with that. 
Wild Card 250s. I started watching you with Fun Day Monday back in 2010. Only started subbing a few months ago. Thanks for the years of entertainment. Sorry I couldn't contribute financially until I became an adult with a J-O-B. Well, let me tell you, Wild Card, you never owe this channel a subscription. I'm grateful for your viewership alone. And it is not you who should be apologizing to me. It is me who should be thanking you so much for tuning in for so long and for giving your support. Never feel obligated to do that. And now with cumulative subscriptions, I, I'm, I'm a big believer in not having unnecessary pressure on people. I really like that it gives someone that pressure, that relief of like, okay, I'm at 39 months, but I'm just going to save for two months and do no subscriptions to anyone and then come back and I pick right back up at 40, 41, 42. Um, all right. We're going to build an Is It's Drake deck. Uh, and I believe... Okay, let me let me get. I'm gonna do something in the opposite order. I'm gonna do my mana base first because I think this one has 21 lands, and I think it's eight of these, and four of these, and then all the dual lands for the steam vents. Oh my god, what what's the what's the enters tapped blue red land? Highland Lake. No, Highland Lake's not Highland Lake. Sulphur Falls. I can never remember these damn dual dual names. Okay, and here's our new card. Blood Crypt. Perfect. Okay, so so I want to talk a little bit about Is It Drake's for a moment. Um, and I'm going to be building this... I'm going to say a little bit from memory, but the fact of the matter is... Um, there's enough people doing Is It Drake's, and I've looked enough at Is It Drake's, that this is not me. This is not me homebrewing. This is me recalling things that I've seen, putting into the deck. The old Guilds of Ravnica Arclight Phoenix version. Um, the idea of this was, if we have a whole bunch of cheap spells that we're casting a lot, we can resurrect the Phoenix, right? And we have the Crackling Drake's, whose power gets larger based upon um, sorceries and instants. We have the Enigma Drake, whose power increases based upon sorceries and instants. So we can see that the Arclight Phoenix and the Drakes kind of had this nice synergy. The theme was cheap spells to draw through our deck, resummon the Phoenixes, and buff the power of the Enigma Drake and Cat Crackling Drake. But, excuse me, ever since the release... Oh, but one of the problems that the Guilds of Ravnica deck had was occasional spikiness. Occasional spikiness, where... You'd have phoenixes in the hand, and you'd have a difficulty putting them into the graveyard. Because the actual value of this card is being able to bring it from the graveyard onto the battlefield cheaply. So you had cards like um, chart a course. Draw two cards, then discard a card. Okay, so you could discard the phoenix. Or tormenting voice. As an additional cost, discard a card, and then draw two cards. Again, it's a way to draw through, but then also... Um, lets you put that phoenix in the bin. Here's the thing that I have found really interesting. It, it took me a long time to even notice this. Uh, the Ravnica Allegiance Drake's deck doesn't run Arclight Phoenix. It runs this very versatile little cheap one drop that incidentally is also a Drake, Terramander. Or as I've heard him affectionately called, Terry. This is, go we're gonna look at this in a lot of detail in the games, but I want to know. We can play it on turn one. It has a similar sensation to the Enigma Drake and the Crackling Drake in that if we put a whole bunch of spells into the bin, into the graveyard, then we can adapt and it gets huge. So it thematically is the same as the Enigma Drake and the Crackling Drake. The more that's in the graveyard, the more swole up we can potentially do. It's also cold as hell in here, man. It is an absolute shiver town over here. That's why my cats are trying to mush on my legs uh, throughout this. Um, so what's the rest of this deck look like? Uh, well, I want to state what the shape of the deck is first. This deck is a lot about getting out one or two of the Big Daddy Drakes, protecting them for one or two turns, and closing it out. So, um, there are three dive downs in this. Oh, I don't have all the dive downs. Target creature you control gets hexproof. You play a crackling drake on turn five with one blue mana up. Boom, dive down. Winds up protecting it from a removal spell. And then next turn, it's like an eight four, so we can clock in there. 
again, early on we want to get one down and protect it. So we also have a spell pierce. Three of these. Again, it functions kind of like a dive down with some added flexibility. Cards like this, counter target thing, unless your opponent pays blah, these generally get weaker as the game goes on, but the Is It Drake's deck is trying to win on turn five, six, seven, eight by just <laughs> huge burst. Um, so things like Spell Pierce and the Dive Down give us the opportunity to do that. Now, what does the rest of the deck look like? Well, since our Drake is three and four cost for the big ones, and the Terramander is one plus N cost for the Adapt, early game, it's pretty straightforward. We have some Shocks to be able to kill things early on. We also have Lava Coils to be able to deal with obnoxious threats. We don't care that this is not a lightning bolt. We're not looking to shoot someone in the face. We're looking to make sure that we slow down our opponent for, again, just two, three turns and smash them to death. So a lot of ways that this game works is briefly remove threats and then abandon all hope of protecting our face. We accept tons of damage and hope to win with the Crackling and Enigma Drakes very swiftly. Um, what are the other pieces of this? Ops to cycle, certainly. Oops. Op. Scry one, draw a card. It goes into the graveyard, buffing the drakes, and lets us draw and scry. Perfect. Um, discovery. You now see why we are running one blood crypt to be able to get uh, one single black source, because infrequently we want to be able to cast the dispersal. But the rest of the time, we're just casting Discovery. Surveil two, then draw a card. Discovery has the unbelievable power of putting two spells that are on top of our deck. We see those two spells with Surveil. We can put them in the graveyard to be able to continuously buff our drakes, right? Running four of these puppies. Um, what, what's, oh, yeah. And this, this card has a second sentence that is often overlooked. Draw two cards, then discard a card unless you attacked with a creature this turn. In the old Guilds of Ravnica, is it Drake's? Charter Course was used to discard the Phoenix, putting it into the graveyard, and you know, occasionally we draw two cards. But recall, we can play a Terramander on turn one. It can then attack on turn two, and Charter Course can permit us to draw two straight up without having to discard a card. In fact, I did not even know Chart of Course had this second sentence. I just looked at the first one. Draw two cards, discard a card. Cool, done. Bam. Um, and then the last one is just a hedge, a single beacon bolt. So you can see that this deck is basically a large amount of draw. Opt. Chart of Course. Crackling Drake. Discovery. And then a whole lot of shit on people abruptly with this stuff. What's the sideboard look like? Said Sean to himself, wondering what the sideboard looks like. Disdainful Stroke. Uh, I believe it's a pair of these. Um, this is an important card because we want to have counter spells that are cheap, 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 cheap. Um, cheapo to the Meepo. Uh, and Disdainful Stroke is a nice targeted removal thing. Um, here's, here's the one that I do know is in the sideboard. If we're up against a more controly deck, we can run a pair of Niv-Mizzets, and Ral, uh, is it Viseroy? Oop, not Visery. I forgot an O. You know, Visero. We run two Rals, two Nivs. Uh, Ral is particularly good against gate decks that have large sweepers, like Gates of Blaze, and, um, you know, can be obnoxious and kill off a lot of our poor little Dracaronis, and Ral can be a very resilient threat in that matchup. Um, the hell else is in this board? Ah, yes. Fiery Cannonade. This is very good against the White Swarmy decks. Um, Entrancing Melody is an interesting one. I'm going to have to craft another one of these. Pair of Entrancy Boys uh, in this. Again, it is a nice way to spend two mana to consume a um, Hydroid Crisis. Flying Blocker is one of the most obnoxious things for us to deal with. Trancing Melody is very nice against the Golgari matchup. Uh, what's the other one that I saw in here? Tre treasure Map, which... Thank you. This is for the control matchups to give us some extra draw and depth in there. 
Um, I know that there's one, what's the huge thing? Star of X Tangshin. One of those for the Sultai slash Golgari matchups. I still call them Golgari because it's like Golgari plus Latins. Um, ah, yes. And because there are a lot of very aggressive decks, just a pair of Sheevan Fires to be able to um, function like extra shocks. Shocks are instant speed. Sheevan Fires are instant speed. They have the extra benefit of being able to get a little bit swoller. Uh, so this is this is a nice little Is It Drakes. Why aren't we Dota in? Because Kevin's out of town. And the thing about Dota is that playing Dota solo queue is like trying to bicycle with only one wheel. I forgot to put the deck on the thing. My bad. This is okay. The discovery's good. The shock's nice. Depending on, upon what Legolas does, we can shock in the steam vents. Oh, we're on the play. I'm gonna go ahead and pay two life. If we're up against aggro, we have the shock to help undo this life's worth of damage. Okay. Terry, the Terramander. Playing the island. I'm going to go ahead and run Terry the Terramander out. Again, Terry plus Chart of Course. Very nice. Deck was still Naya. I know. I know. It sucks. I uh, need to need to fix that after this fact. Jay Wareho. This is a bit of a problem. Is it good to shock this? No, I should probably, probably keep the shock. So now I just draw two. Great. This is going to be good eventually for our Crackling Drakes. Perfect. Kind of. Kind of perfect. I don't like that Legolas is going to be healing so damn much, but I still think that we're going to be for the most part okay. Sheriff. Where's it going? Ugh. ugh. Alright, so. So I'm going to go ahead and swing in with Terry. Chart a course to draw two. God, that feels real powerful. Now, do I want to. I can not shock. I can just play this and then respond by... See, if I play this and... Let me think for a moment. I actually am going to do... Well, we'd lose Terry. That's fine. Okay, so I'm going to pay the life to be able to Discovery now. Because I'd like a land to go along with my Crackling Drake. Terry's nice, but I think we just don't want Terry at this point in time. I think we actually just want that land. Crackling Drake with Dive Down is very good. Incubation Druid is a very good outcome for us. Merfolk Branch Walker stinks a little bit, but not a whole lot. Like, life's being gained three at a time, which hurts quite a bit. My name is Day Nine. Did you see that? I just watched him rhyme. Oh me, oh my. Is it winning time? So, I mean... I can shock and lava coil this, which I actually think is pretty, pretty dope. This will likely grow next turn and just become a measly little 3-5. Yeah, I think shock coil is our play. And this actually can be adapted.
Yeah, I'm doing this now. This is the matchup that I think I understand the least. So, I have no idea if we are have an advantage or a deficit against this, but I really need to think a lot more as I'm playing this matchup at the start. So this is this is a reasonable run out for us. Right? It's a bunch of non-threats. Cast down's fine, cast down's fine. Did you just hear me say cast down's fine? Cast down's fine. So let's go ahead and play one crackling drake first. And just investigate what the draws are. This is important to do, right? Yep. Okay, so we have the play here. Swing in like this. Say yes. We can block dive down like this. And we can shock whichever one gets buffed. Yeah, uh, decklist hasn't been updated. Won't be updated until after this match. It's totally my bad, Cloudburst. Health is a resource, and I spend it very well. Yep, so we have dove down. What is it? Hi, sweetie. How's it going? Yep, it's okay. Come on. Yep, yep, go on up. Oh. Okay. This is a problem. Okay, so I think I shock something. I think these guys are the bigger threats. Bigger than this Murpho B Walker. I think I swing like this. Alright, so a trade could happen. But then I need to play this guy. And I need to have two blockers back. So I may as well swing it with the Drake. Okay. Baco Taco, happy four years, 48 months in a row. Woo! All right, we're looking for a dive down here. Well, that sucks a whole bunch. All right, this can't be cast. If this can get killed though. Well, doesn't that just suck ass? Okay. Okay, so, what a prick. Yeah, no, so we die. Because we literally cannot provide enough blockers, because this is going to be able to adapt three. So let's see here. We definitely want the entrancing melodies we want, right? Good for snatching merfolk branch walkers that are huge. Not merfolk branch walkers, wild growth walkers that are huge. Want to starve extinction. Crap, what do I cut? Beacon Bolt feels maybe good. Probably the spell Pierce. There's not as many spells in there. I almost want to cut the two shocks as well, but it feels like there's a lot of value to be had with that. I think I almost prefer to do this. I think this is what I want to do. The reason the coils are, I want the shocks for the dudes that I would have trouble dealing with anyways. 
I have entrancing melodies for the real obnoxious things, which are like wild growth walkers. So you can think of these entrancing melodies as replacing the uh, lava coil. So we still have four answers to lava coils here, but we have now a more flexible answer to the lava coil. Uh, we, we could also do something like this. I think this makes sense. Also, as always, if you're going to make a suggestion for what to cut and what to put in, make sure you say both at the same time. Cut this for this, for this reason. Um, also, because if you're just saying, you know, a quick thing like, yeah, cut that, like, you know, your chat might be a little out of sync with the video, so I'm not sure which one you're referring to. Do we want Ral or Niv Mizzet as a persistent threat? I don't think so. I think I'm actually looking to just try to shit on the enemy. Don't forget to update the deck. I need to be out of the game to be able to do that, so. Dradog says, cut the paper, add the rock. Ah, yes! Ah, yes, yes. That's a good hand. Oh, that's a very good hand. T-Keeping says, ah, sorry. Dude, no apology needed at all. I'm deeply grateful that you are reminding me. Let's go ahead and surveil a pair. Oof. Oh, my bones. Uh... I think we just bin them both. Pleasure 93 says, you play a wide variety of decks, but do you have any favorite set of colors overall, Sean? Totally, completely fine uh, duress target. It's not even the best one that our opponent can zap, so that's, that's grand, old, grand old news. So I definitely want our land drops. Let's go ahead and try to snickety snatch that. Opt, I'm going to go ahead and put into the bin. Because again, it's helping buff my drake. And then I'll intend on opting at the end of turn. Chat, do me a favor. Can you, for anyone who's suggesting we change the deck list, can you let them know that uh, we can't until after the game? That'd be great. Wow, you are just a snuggly little sweetheart today, aren't you? Hi. So we have a we have a spell pierce up, which is okay. I'd like to note that it's turn four and we have a seven four flyer on the board, which is really nice. There could be a number of things like cast down or oh, thing of beauty, huh? So I do want to opt main phase because one, it can help us get something really valuable like this. But I think two, yeah. Hi, sweetie. What are you being such a snuggler for? Okay, I'm alter ego 100 bits with the pog champ. Here, these are extra scritches from okay. I'm alter ego sheriff. What do you think of that? Are they nice? Oh, she thinks they're very nice. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna just put you up there. Become a little scarf. Yeah, it's nice up here on dad, isn't it? Yes, it tickles. Oh, that tickles, sweetheart. Don't lick my face. Oh, my God. You're a really sweet cat. What a little sweetheart. My God. Hi. How's it going? How are you, Sheriff? Sheriff. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Just give me kisses. Yep, right there. That's where the kisses go. Is that cat even real? No, I actually think it's a stuffed animal designed at, like, an FAO Schwartz come to life. Do we want to board in anything else? I think I think we're actually in good shape. I love this cat. This cat literally does cute things all day. I have no complaints. Cut entrancing for more sweepers like Cannonade. Um, there's going to be a lot of things with three or more toughness in this matchup, such as a uh, Jade Light Ranger that gets the double explore plus one plus one. Uh, just a raw 
Wild Growth Walker. It's pretty much just the Merfolk Branch Walkers and the Llanowar Elves that are consistent targets. And so for that reason, I would rather run more things that let me um, consistently take a shit upon the enemy. <laughs> Call me Sanctuary. Happy 78 months. I think this is a bad hand. No, I guess on turn two we have the chart of course, chuck an island play. Turn two, duress, spell pierce. That does hurt a little bit. Alright, I feel like my deck is trying to tell me something. It's that we definitely have islands. Jade Light is okay. Cast down. Into the graveyard. And that stays. Okay, it looks like Legolas79 wants some mana. Flight says, if you have a sub hit 80 months, we have several 94 and 95 month subs here. Which is just, I mean, it's just, just spectacular. I think I opt first. I mean, that's actually kind of a, a ridiculous draw. It's a nice one. Especially if a Hydroid Crisis comes down at any point in this game. Find and finality. And it's gone. Duress. Is that going to stay there? No, it's taking a trip out. Alright, I'm playing a mono blue Drake deck, apparently. I'm a liar. Okay. So now I can block, dive down, trade up. No attacks can come. Okay. I must attack. That I may chart a course. Into better thingos. Now depending on what our opponent does. We could just burst for a shitload of damage and just win abruptly. Seems fine. I'm gonna take a bunch of damage. One, two, three. Is that bad? Yeah. Holding steady at two. Hmm. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, I think we lose this one. I don't think there's anything I can grab here. I'm just gonna go ahead and give him the win. Bit of a rough run out in that last game, but that's fine. One of our first games playing, and I think I said earlier, that's, that's one of those matchups that I don't have a lot of confidence in my overall game plan, so I just need to grind a lot of games out. I expect to lose a bunch at the start and then start winning a lot. As we just simply get better. Fuck the deck list. Fuck! Here, I'm just, I'm just going to concede out. I'm just, I am a streamer and I want to make sure that I am doing a good stream. So, we can always win more points. Dex. Is it Drake's? Export. Okay. Oh my god, it's happening. It's happening. Strom Decor. Uh oh, Dex. Paste the deck. Is it Drake's? Alright, set is current. Okay, now it should be uploaded. Now you should have the widget correct. Floris, have you thought about adding one to two maximize velocity to add some more burst? Yeah, I think that's a very reasonable option. I'll note that we've played precisely one best of three, so we should probably just... It's perfectly fine keep. 
double off with a single island. We have plenty of chances to get extra land. Because I get one draw and then two chances per opt, so I have six total opportunities to draw an additional land. So, I mean, that's an unbelievably easy one land keep. Everyone loves this sweater. This is like, this sweater is actually more popular than Day 9 TV. Uh, we're going to see what our opponent does first. One of says, Candidate seems a poor sweeper. How about replacing it with a counter spell? Um, I, I would say that's probably... That's actually seems... Uh, like that would hurt us a lot because when do we want cannonade we want it on matchups like mono white or azorius aggro the very white go wide that has a lot of x1s and x2s and on turn three when i could cast a cannonade that's the spot where i am like oh shit i need to get rid of all this stuff asap right on turn three and turn four and against those types of decks it does not really help me that much to have an additional counter spell at that early stage in the game Like, if, if our opponent has three small X1s and X2s on the board, and then I hit turn three, and then I have counterspell mana up, it's not going to help me out of the situation the same way that the Fiery Cannonade would. That said, what your your general sentiment, Juan Odeso, is 100% correct. In that, oh, fuck! Accidental skip. No big deal. Don't mind me. I will just scream at top of lung. I whiffed on the opt. That was my bad. Anyways, um, your sentiment is totally spot on in that Fiery Cannonade is kind of a shitty sweeper, but we are is it. We are just trying to win in a burst fashion on turn 5, 6, 7. So we really just need like one or two of those every now and again, infrequently, and we can blow things up. Secret opt psych out? Yeah, that's the one. Any word on Mostly Walking Mark? Return to the Obra Dinn is going to be... The manoeuvre. Set the course. Make it happen. We are going to pre-combat opt. Isn't that kind of guy? I don't think we need any more land in this game. Uh-huh. Yep. You know what? I'm really, I'm really glad that we found the extra land. So I'm going to be a smart man and just whack Bolus 974 in the face. We're not that concerned about the Thief of Sanity, generally speaking. And I believe that this is the mid-range Esper aggro deck. Yeah. This is the mid-range Esper deck. It runs Thief of Sanities, it runs Hero of Precinct 1s, it runs Thought Erasure. And the goal of this deck is kind of to eat through my hand. Nice. One for one, not a big deal. The goal of the Esper um, mid-range deck is to kind of like expend a lot of our resources through duress type things, through making us discard some things, through making us, um, you know, with things like Thought Erasures, having a few removals, and then really... I don't want my opponent to have any more action on turn. I'll never finish this thought. Yeah, the goal is uh, of the Esper deck is to try to just grind me out slowly by eliminating cards in my hand. So our our health is never really that big of a concern in this matchup. So we're just still looking for the protect the big boy and go in there. Oh my God, the man himself, the legend Sakriel. That's actually a pretty good, pretty good outcome. 
Woo! Woo! I love missing damage. Missing damage is like my favorite thing. Cancel. What am I doing? Charter course first. 100%. Not even close. Love missing damage. We just missed so much damage. We missed one point of damage. It hurts so much. Anyways. I'm gonna do this. 100%. Anyways. Sakriel with a host of 2,815 viewers. Hot damn, Sakriel. Oh, I'm so glad that's one Bola stole. If any of you don't know, Sakriel is just this spectacular streamer who um, recently has been focusing a lot on Zashuta style games in particular. I've been watching Sakriel play Apex Legends in the AMs. I wake up, I do my ellipticlage. Watch them feel so good. God dang. Apex Legends looks so sick. It just looks it just looks amazing. I don't think that Bolas974 is running any. Oh, there goes the other Draco. I don't think there's any Kai's Wrath being run in the main deck. That's a very good one. See, those two to three points of damage that I missed previously would have meant our opponent could be a little bit lower in health, and then I could have maybe been closer to just getting lethal right now. Hurts a bit. Terry! You know what feels really good? When your opponent has to chump with Chromium. Just to show my can, huh? Hi, sweetheart. All right, great. Perfect. I There's a lot of effort that I need to spend smoothing out my gameplay of this deck. Because, like, I'm feeling like I had a lot more opportunities to get in for extra damage. And I think that it's a time like now where I could falsely state, oh, I need more card draw, I need more threats, because we're almost there, maybe need some face burn. I think that what I should have done is win already. Um, he's already seen that island. There's a really nice feature in Magic the Gathering Arena, which is that, let's say your opponent has looked in your hand, and you have one island. If you draw a, a second island, whenever you play one of them, from the opponent's view, the island that was visible comes down. So in other words, I don't have to do things like, did he, did he see this island or did he see this island? Oh, he's seen this island, I need to play it. As long as I've played an island, my opponent does not have any information. Which is really great. I need neither of these. Yuck. Dive down seem very important in this matchup. Spell pierces seem very important in this matchup. That sucks. I think we're dead. Sorry, Keep up the pace. Single Banefire can do work in this deck. I think Banefire is going in the wrong direction. Because I'm trying to just win on turn 6-7 with big bursty protection of drakes. If I'm running a Banefire, I have one less tool that's defending one of my drakes. And also, at that point in time... I mean, it's not particularly like... I'm going to even have the opportunity to uh, cast it most of the time. Uh, this deck also only runs 21 lands. So I think really what you're seeing, Valentine61, is that I, I really should have won by now. <laughs> All right. Um, 
given that I'm still trying to learn this puppy, I'm just going to go ahead and concede and go on to the next game. Why not spell Pierce to Fairy? Uh, because our it would not have done anything. Our opponent would have just tapped two land and played to Fairy, you know. Fiery can Cannonade might be potentially quite good. I'm wondering about the Rawls. No, there, there's a lot of Raska's Contempts. Maybe we want the Nivs. How do I board in against this? I mean, this actually feels pretty good. Hi, sweetie pie. See, the thing about... I think I do want the shocks, because that's good for the Thief of Sanities and the Heroes of Precinct 1s. Shut up, phone. Beacon Bolts are good for large individual threats. Like, I'd be slightly worried about my opponent doing something like casting a Lyra. Um, but I think if I do something like... Kind of like putting in the big boys. Something like this. To deal with the larger threats. Maybe just one Rawl. I actually don't think I want all my shocks gone. I think these are. this is actually the right route to go down. I think this is the right route to go down. I think this is the right route to go down. <sighs> Plausibly cutting a single spell pierce seems good. Didn't I just fucking mulligan this hand? Ugh. I don't think I can win this matchup if I go to five. I mean, I think I, I kind of have to go down this route, which I don't want to do. But the enemy runs several discard effects. So if I get any land here, we're in good shape. Uh, I mean, this might be just one of those we instantly snap lose, which is which I'm fine with. But I think going to five just opens me up to lose immediately versus this type of deck because it's running Bell Haunts and it's running Thought Erasures. So, I mean, that very quickly shuts me down a ton. Do we need an extra land on the sideboard when we curve up? I don't think so. We have enough cantrips. I mean, this... this doing this because this to me says that our opponent is running low on valuable things in hands. Last two matches. Well, I guess we've lost three matches in a row because we just auto-conceded uh, the previous one. Lauren, you just late as fuck. Leave up the disdainful stroke because we can't really do anything right now. That's so good for our opponent. All right, I'm just I'm just getting out of here. This was this is just a derpy series. So we're back to just starting platinum four. I'm not too not too torn up about that. One of the games we just conceded to make sure that the uh, stream decker was up. Uh, one of the games was against a Golgari where, uh, with, uh, I talked about this the other day. There's times when you have a lot of one thing maybe late in the game. So you can eat into that part of the plan to get stronger somewhere else early on. So for instance, I had opportunities to do discarding. And there were times where I kept land. Well, I wound up with a bloat of land later because we have so many cantrips. So maybe I should actually just be more willing to chuck those lands early, even if I feel like I don't have a lot of land draws. 
Um, seems more than fine enough. So, like, you know, I I've been feeling some sort of, like, wild, all-over-the-place swings in some of these games. So I'm just trying to get some equilibrium on there. And so we were against Golgari in the first matchup, where it felt like we had some real strength. Again, it's like, out of nowhere, I have, like, an 8-4 flyer, and I just, like, instantly win. And then there's other times where it feels like I kind of dither around a little bit. Um, hello, Terry. So I just, need a, I just need to hit a little bit more of an equilibrium. So, I mean, if I am feeling hopeless in some of these games, that's where I start to think, man, I really got to change this deck. There's a real problem with the deck. In these games, I'm feeling much more like things are going way too right in some circumstances and way too wrong in others. Absolutely 1,000% getting rid of that puppy. Things are going, like, insanely right. Things are going insanely wrong, you know, and everything there. Whenever I have these kind of crazy, swingy, nutty outcomes, that's typically when I say to myself, ooh, you know. I got a lot of work I could do here. I'm shocking this land in because it allows me to represent a lot more, and our health is essentially irrelevant against a control deck. I'm going to go ahead and shoot our opponent in the face here. And now this should be enough because we have one, two, three spells in the bin. So now this costs three less, so this is five. So I can actually... Yeah, I mean, this is what I mean by, like, just all of a sudden you're dealing huge amounts of damage. Turn 5, 6, 7 is really where this deck's looking for a win. So if our opponent, say, has a Kaya's Wrath, but doesn't have a land, um, could be a bit problematic for our enemy. Oof. Wow, any spell would have done it. I'm not going to play the Enigma Drake because we need to make sure that we're playing around Akaya's Wrath. Perfect. Okay, we know what to do in this matchup. We don't need any Lava Coils. No, we don't need any Shocks here. No, we need to get in both of the Niv, Mizzet, Rall, it Treasure, Map, and Disdainful Stroke. Very easy sideboard plan. We have eight Kill the Creature cards, the Shocks and Lava Coils. We have a distribution of more longer-term value and anti-value cards. Niv, Mizzet, Rall, Treasure Map, Disdainful Stroke, Board of Men. And then we have the Beacon Bolt also as a little bit of insurance. JT's me says, aren't the shock for more damage on the Drakes as well? Yeah. We certainly are losing out on, say, three to five points of damage if we get rid of a shock. But I'm replacing a shock with a Niv Mizzet. I'm replacing a shock with the Rals. And so for that reason, uh, I, a lot of circumstances, it's like, do I really want the extra three or four damage? Well... Another way to think of this matchup is we're up against Esper Control, which has a lot of heals. Absorbs gain three life each. Minus two moment of cravings give us or give our opponent plus two life. Vraska's Contempt gives plus two life. And so against the enemy, we're not trying to deal 20 damage. We're trying to deal like 30 to 35 points of damage. So getting an extra three to five um, feels like it's not going to help us get the extra 15 points. So that's my thought on that, JT is me. Finifia says, seems weird to sideboard for a later game strategy against a control deck. Um, that's just a sensible sentence that you said, right? Like, if my opponent's trying to go control, why would I try to go control? Um, it's that we already have so many significant threats. Like, that's the thing. We have significant threats, period. We have four um, Terramanders. We have four Crackling Drakes. We have four Enigma Drakes. We had 12 threats. 
So it's not that we're becoming a slower controller deck. It's that we have 12 threats that are pretty much just as threatening. And now we have 16 threats because we put in two Nivs and two Rals. That's really all that we're doing. So it's less that we're going from aggro to control. And more precisely, we're going from... Um, a few ways to shit on the enemy to so many ways to shit on the enemy. Wootburger says, yay, it's the sweater. I mean, yay, it's day nine. <laughs> You've got me. I'm going to go ahead and pay the life here. Lots of things that we can spell pierce, and I want to ensure that I can opt as well. Opting and spell piercing seems like a nice thing to do against a control deck. Land is what we're going to put to the bottom. Do I want a second Terry? No. I'd rather have something usefuler like a crackler. Crackling. Break. All right, let's get all of our different types of mana. Don't see a reason to play the Enigma Drake right now. Like, we won't really be able to get that much damage out of the Enigma Drake. I'd rather be able to keep all of this mana up. Do I want to Spell Pierce, or do I want to Dive Down? I think Diving Down is probably the better move here. Spell Pierce has a little bit more versatility. This is, again, where Chart of Course is, like, such a good card in this. Hello! Absorb that we can Spell Pierce. It's a fairly significant outcome. Yeah. Also, that's part of the reason why we dove down earlier, because you can't dive down and absorb. Whatever happened to Wolf Shirt Wednesday, says Cloudburst 013? I don't know. I need to do more themed clothing. Why? Why is that not what we do here at Day 9 TV, huh? See you later, alligator. How many things are in the bin? Okay. I'm going to go ahead and hit him with the steam vents. Yoikes. Zoinks like hey, Scoob. Screw the day-night festival. Time for day-night fashion festival, says Drunk Terran. You're telling me, kid. I don't think I want to just abruptly cast the dive down. This kind of forces our opponent to either get this or get this. I don't want to just throw this and this away. Yeah. So this this speaks to me a little bit like... Uh, So sick. Now, do I want to keep this alive or this alive? It's a very interesting question. Okay. This one or this one, huh? I think I, I think I chucked Terry. It's good to have you back, my friend.
This is before draw and before discard from the eldest Reborn. Prize of losses. What does chat think about Warkai Marauder in Tempo Blue? I, I personally think that the Terramanders are su perfectly sufficient. Everybody now! I perfectly... I, I think that there's just better things. Warkai Marauder seemed good in uh, Guilds of Ravnica, but now in Ravnica Allegiance with Terry. The, the buff a creature counter spell. Hell, even Exclusion Mage. What a little piece of garbage, huh? Alright, so now our opponent's Busto on Manor Mana. And now cannot do any Wrath effects. We can still adapt to Terry. Got him. Why Chuck Terry? I didn't want to put a Crackling Drake in my bin to get resurrected. Play another game. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I think it might be a good sideboard card for some match. That's an interesting point, Frazzle Lass. My god, look, I got a little gray cat right here. Hello, little gray cat. And I got a little brown cat down here. Hello, Share Bear. This is a perfectly acceptable starting hand. Purposes, do ranks matter in this game? Is the climb better? Uh, I mean, I had a perfectly reasonable time doing the climb. My name's Day9. So, I think in this matchup, I just want to board in the Sheevan Fires. I don't know how the heck I board in this matchup. Earth do I board in this matchup? Wow. Nice. So I think I'm going for the outrace plan. Lava coiling the Viashino Pyromancer. I need the Sheevan Fires for sure. Hi. Absolutely no blocks, not a chance in hell. This attack says to me there's no shocks in Wave Lightning's hand. There's probably another land. Here's our whirly Dirly friend. Wow, what a draw. One, two, three, four, five. So it doesn't seem like there's anything in here to kill any of our stuff, so. Let's see if we can win the race, huh? And we, I mean, if both of our drakes live, then we just lethal next turn. There's another land. Bring it on. I mean, it could also be just like lightning bolt, lightning bolt, lightning bolt, and we die. We didn't. We're the best. Let's see if our opponent does anything. Alright, well, let's make this guy strong. Got him. Okay. How do we how do we change the board? Oh, no, so the Terramanders we definitely get out. She even fires go in. Probably not disdainful stroke. This is my little sentry, she's keeping me. Uh, this doesn't seem amazing.
Feels pretty good. Feels pretty good. You doing okay? It's a very good cat. Yes. Yes. I love you so much. Okay, I'm going to kiss you. There you go. I love kissing that cat in the head. Dive down, out, Melody Cannonade in. I think we really want to keep our dive downs. I think we really, really want to keep our dive downs. Such, it's just, first of all, it's very good defensively. It's very good for buffing our drakes. And our goal is to briefly defend and fucking kill them. This is an okay hand. There it is. Ba boom. Ba bow. How on earth do you like me now? Despy's what, three or four years old? Yes. Four and a half. These cats are very tiny. Nice. See you later, Terry. Terry is largely a chump in this match. She even fire. Cut the beacon bolt. Oh, beacon bolt's a good cut. We could probably cut the beacon bolt for a fuck out of here. We could probably cut the bacon bolt for something good. This is great. So we've already gone through five points of burn. Well, I want to start off with a discovery dispersal. It seems like the right play. Oh shit. One, two, th oh shit, I miscounted. I miscounted like crazy. Get in there, Terry. I love calling this thing Terry, man. I was like, oh, I heard someone else say that's not gonna stick with me, but Terry is like just the dopest ass's name. Buttons, dude. Big thing we're looking for is a Drake. So this is good because this skewer of the critics is gonna. What are you doing, Wave Lightning? Now this way you gonna hard cast this for three? Okay, we won. I mean this is essentially an unlosable position. Is it spelled Terry or Terry? asks Daft Chap. I read what you wrote. Take action. Perfect outcome for us. Absolutely perfect. Jesus. Wave Lightning, I think, is not playing well uh, with this pile of cards. And also, I mean... I just think something like this is fine. C. Gordini says, Daft Chap, you basically described my mother and father. Both of them are named variants of Terry. This risk factor can still be cast. That hurts. Okay. I think we are dead now. The fact that the experimental frenzy was, was boarded in kills us. And you know, I think it was a mistake for me to go for this extra land, because I think I'm thinking too... like... I feel like I'm thinking a little bit too, um, nice. A little too much about things that don't really matter in this matchup. Like, getting that extra land I think was bad. I think I'm being a little too land focused with some of these draws, because I'm like, well, I can play another land in this turn, and that seems good, right?
Oh, just draw two cards, yeah. So we have to live through this turn, which feels like it's going to be damn hard. You got us. Bing bong. Maybe we're just dead. Not shocking a goblin. Uh, boy, yeah, I should have done that. I don't know why. Hmm. In my mind, I was like, I can't shock this. It'll sack and ping me for one. Just simple, simple with. But decline. All right, that's good. I think we think we've done it. Here, just hold me. Hold me, sheriff. Hold me. Yes, tickle my ear. Tickle, tickle the ear. That's nice. Oh, that's a happy cat. Okay. And the card on the top is. Oh. <laughs> Is that a land? Oh. <laughs> yeah, got me. Hello. Hello, sir. It's a big cat. Hello. You're a happy cat. So let's see here. Do we st maybe we do want like this out, a fiery cannonade in, maybe? Um, um. Stainful strokes maybe are a little too slow for us. Yeah, no, I think I think we're good. The 1-1 one, one goblets are pirates, right? Yes, fanatical firebrands are pirates, Gitu lava runners, Vishino pyromancers are not. So that's kind of why I'm trying uh, Fiery Candidate instead of Beacon Bolt. Both are pretty mediocre, but I'm debating between one mediocre thing and another mediocre thing. And we'll see how mediocre mediocre is, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, hello. Hello. Are you gonna kill me? Uh oh. You saw it. That's sad. Pretty sad. Hi. I think the biggest mistake I made that game was um, Discovery keeping a land instead of just banning both lands. Face spins a land. So I think what I'm going to do is this is tricky because this to me feels like there's a lava shock up or lava coil, lava shock. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do a line that is a little more complex and tricky. The simple line is play the Enigma Drake and go. Well, if he has it, then he just has it, right? Um, do I wish to spell pierce this? Probably not. I think our play is to try to protect our Enigma Drake with a spell pierce. Good. We we did it. Well, I should say we did it acceptably enough. Which would mean that if Wave Lightning has a Lava Coil and another land, then we don't live for a little bit. Uh-huh. So... So we're just trying to play around Lava Coil, and now they can Lava Coil us. Oh, excellent. Unbelievably excellent. So great. Is a 
good day to kill. This is instant too, which is really nice. We did it. So yeah, we just wanted to keep the spell pier pierce up initially for the Lava Quail. Because if I just run the Enigma Drake down with three land, pass the turn to them and they just zap it and our life's bad. Okay. Oh. Two damage to each non-pirate creature. Even fire being able to deal four is very, very nice. The game has become a slow game. We both have removal. We both have a little bit of life. Where were you last turn? Wouldn't have helped, but still. Angry and upset with it. End of turn risk factor. We're going to be taking a ton of damage from this puppy. No reason to keep a land in hand when you're about to frenzy. Why would he do that? Because he wants to get a land from the deck and start thinning his deck immediately to improve the uh, quality of his uh, experimental frenzy. Oh shit. Well, this is a terrible position to be in. Double risk factor is really rough. Hey, uh... well, this, is, this is one of the issues with running so few creatures. This deck does tend to fizzle out when uh, you whiff on creatures in some spots, and that's all right. Gotta give it to him. This cat is really cute. I think it would have been better to cancel the first risk factor. Couldn't. Five, there was five, so. Five, unfortunately, means that they just pay the two. be amazed if Wave Lightning didn't have, like, another creature or big play right here. Oh, well, that's, I mean, that's a, basically the only draw that we can possibly have to maybe win this. But, uh... Ah, shit. We just gotta decline. This is, this is just gonna be a sucky, sucky few turns. It's a lot of risk factors, man. Dive down, please! Perfect. Exactly what we needed. That's what we want to spell pierce. Why not pierce that? We're trying to reduce damage. We want to spell pierce things that can deal damage to us. Not just spell pierce. Th Ugh. Get out of here. Also, keeping pierce up for our one win condition, which is Crackling Drake. But at that point, if my opponent's starting to target my face with a spell pierce. I'm getting out of here. Yeah, so Spell Pierce is a spell we have to use really surgically. We can't just say, oh, Spell Pierce will resolve here, so I'm just going to run it out. In particular, Risk Factor, it tends to be a pretty weak card to Spell Pierce, just overall. Niwe Sky, come on. I'm going to give you a little bit of a timeout, Niwe Sky. If you want to provide some thoughtful feedback, it would be great, but, you know. Just being a bit of a jerk is... It's just not helpful. Yeah. And for what it's worth, this is the 
That was the third match that we uh, wound up playing with this deck, so. Play first. That yeah, seems good. Yeah, I, I can see the, in that position, Spell Pierce, the risk factor. In general, Spell Piercing risk factor is a little weak, so that may have been one of the influencing elements to my evaluation there, that I looked at that, and my brain has Spell Pierce risk factors to weak avail. Again, r rarely do I think I'm the rightest person ever when it comes to Magic the Gathering. I do want to opt here to try to hit a land drop. But, uh, you know, if you want to give thoughts, I love hearing thoughts. Hearing thoughts and discussing stuff is great. Do I just take this in shock? I think no. I think I literally have so many creatures. I need to get those out ASAP. Yeah, but I love this guy. Discussions are great, but... When it turns into ab hominem. <laughs> so I'm like, whoa, whoa. And for what it's worth, to the kind sir, I timed out briefly. Could have very well been that you were merely thinking out loud, you know. Like, hmm, here's my evaluation of this. Or, you know, certainly get how it's frustrating sometimes when you're watching someone play magic and you see the play and they don't see the play. We have all been there. Let me go ahead. I think I accidentally made it a longer timeout, too. Ah, yes, I meant to make it 60 seconds, and I made it 600. There we go. You are now untimeouted, Mr. Neway Sky. Neway Sky says, You're right, my bad, bro. I appreciate that. I will note, it's, it's less that I'm right. And more just like a, you know. Wait, what just... Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Curious Obsession. I always forget that if you didn't attack at the beginning of your end step, you didn't... You get sacrifices. Yes. I completely get it's one of those things that happens a lot when one is watching a streamer. Where you're just like, oh, God, I can't believe he did that thing. And again, this is this is a new, a, a new mental framing I've been thinking about when it comes to... Uh, reading chat and reading Twitter and evaluating things that are occurring on the internet. A lot of times people are just sharing their thoughts aloud. Sometimes it rubs us the wrong way. We streamy folk. And that is all good. It is all good. It is all right. I think I just, I think I just nuke this Siren Storm Tamer. There's not enough things in the bin for me to worry about Terry adapting anytime soon. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's less that you're a big prick and need to feel bad, and way more that, you know, trying to communicate <laughs> in as weird a format as live twatch can wind up with weirdness, so. No worries at all. Thrilled to have you back. It happens, my friend. Set the course. Make it happen. So if we do this, then the beacon bolt will actually go off. But this does look a lot like a dive down, doesn't it? So I think I would rather have, like, this. So it'll be six, and then we can bin seven. Beacon Bolt is Jumpstart? Yeah. So now these are 7 4s, so Dive Down does not protect this, so I can swing straight into Jiro. It's a good play, right? This is the thing that I am trying to work on hard with this deck. Like, like finding this play 
is something I would be would have been incapable of doing unless I had watched other better players play with this deck. Because the point of what I just did was used a bunch of my cycle type cards to deposit things into my graveyard to make these large enough to crush through a Tempest Jin getting dived down. And now Jiro's running low on cards. We get more Terries. So this is four to adapt, minus one, or excuse me, uh, eight to adapt, minus two. So this is six to adapt. So neither Terry can adapt a Roni. We'll be able to eat through a dive down here. Or a spell pierce or whatever the heck these things are. Good. Could be another dive down. Same difference to me. Enigma Drake gets buffed by things in graveyards, not things in exile, so. So now Jiro has a pickle. Can't swing with that one. So it's very hard not to have lethal coming up here. We can let this live. Seems like the play, right? Ooh. Victoire. I think our, our setup's pretty good. It's plausible that we actually want these Sheevan Fires and not these Beacon Bolts, right? It's plausible, too, that we may want these Fiery Cannonades. Spell Pierce seems a little weak in this matchup. See, I want these. Do we think a Niv Mizzet might be good in this? No Purge Gamers. Your Purge Gamers gone. I think, I think I'm just going to keep my, my one drop set the same. It's hard for me to convince myself to cut or change that much. What do I think about Fiery Kananad? The thing is that I, I feel like the single targety things are good and scary. Like, Beacon Bolt is the most inflexible of my removal spells. I, I just think that Lava Coil is good for the gin, the gins. Yeah, I have a lot of single little pew, 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 pew. Ecalquin says, do we really not want Banefire in this deck at all? That seems really odd to me, but I don't know. Yeah, I would describe it as um, Banefire is a card that in a really long control matchup is very good at just blowing our opponent up. And actually, screw Banefire from it. Let's think about what this deck is. This deck is Protect the President. We have 12 Presidents. We have our 12 Drakes. I will have one, two, three, four draws. Five. Yeah. Here's the first draw. First. No one should ever counter an opt. Okay, there's the second card we get to look at. Here's the third. And the fourth. And whoopsie dipsy. And then we... In my estimation, it's okay to miss one land drop, so I think it's fine if we hit two. Or if we uh, need another turn. Spell Pierce is nice here. I mean, Mono Blue Tempo does not really have a lot of removal-y type thingies, so should be fine. So 
So, very clear what the play be. Trade with me. Trade with me. Chart of course is like a nut draw here. This is not a wizard, so wizard's retort can't pop off. There's the two mana counter Adelio. I think we ditch the chart of course. Discovery dispersal is more so what I want. How do we kill that guy? Double dive down gets us. Dive down pierce gets us. These lands are few and far between. So, if I want my opponent to waste time and waste tempo, I want to not... If I cast a spell now that my opponent countered or dove down, then during our opponent's untap phase, they would get all their mana back. So, I'm going to wait until they've untapped on their turn. I'm going to try to shoot Terry. Now, if this gets countered or dove down... It stinks some, but that's okay, because Jiro is doing this all on Jiro's turn. There's the draw phase, there's the four. I mean, Jiro's also doing the protect the president type thing, but doing it in slow motion. Enigma Drake is very good against this. We already have so many things in the bin as well. One land right now would be spectacular. You have six in the bin already? Yeah. Chart a course, and then remember I used Discovery to surveil and put a lot of things into the bin, which is really nice. Okay. So this could get countered. This could just get two mana countered, put a plus one, plus one counter on this. Great, that was a good read by us, because why the hell else would you blink of an eye our one dude? Which now sets our opponent up to get Lava Coiled, and I think Jiro just made an egregious error, so GG. Bam, 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 getting marginally better at things at a marginal rate. I think that, like, blink of an eyeing a 1-1 one, one does put things a little face up, you know? And now I have enough for a Spell Pierce and a Dive Down, which is a thing of beauty. And it's very easy for us to just abruptly win in two turns. Because Bash for 7, put them to 11, put some more things in the bin. Bash for a billion. That sucks marginally. No curious obsession anymore. Swing in. Perfect. Play the second Drake. Still have dive down, still have spell pierces up. Feels good, man. was a good one mana win. This was a good one mana keep. Oh! Oh! My opponent didn't also have a spell pierce! Oh! 
What's been the win rate? I think we lost our first three. Best of threes. Now we're starting to win. KFG is 500 bits. Is this cheer is for your awesome mods and chat. Oh, fuck yeah, KFG. So we really do have the most sickening of excellent mods. So if I do this first, that's 9, and then 10, 11. If our opponent did have a spell pierce to keep that alive, we attack, double dive down one of our dudes, and now our Drake steal 11. I'm gonna use the restroom real fast, and then uh, hopefully, hopefully we can actually up rank. I've been sort of like ever since the reset on the first of February, I just keep going like platinum four up to platinum two, back down to platinum four. And the story of that is, let's play a meta deck going up. I have some ideas I want to fiddle with going down. You know what I mean? I'll be right back. I'm gonna use the restroom, get copy, be out of B. It's your pal day nine, ready to is it it. All right, so we've actually, holy crap. What? We've been playing for an hour and a half? What? Wow. Whoa, Jesus. I thought we'd been playing for like 30 or 40 minutes. What the hell? All right. Waiting on your opponent. Alright. Whoa! Whoa! Yeah! Time flies when you're having fun. Yeah, I also got a lot to think about with this one. This is a real... This is, this is a thinking man's deck. It's not like my big clowny ass. <laughs> Naya decks where I'm like, bah! <laughs> it's like playing Palaka Worms after Palaka Worms. Epitheton says, any uh, plans to play Dota Auto Chess in the future? Uh, I did play it uh, this recent Saturday, and it was okay. So I think that I just universally bin lands, I think is what I allege to do. I know what I just said, okay? I know what I just said. I know what I just said, but I think, I think, maybe not never keep lands, but maybe, like, be a little careful of it. I swear to God, I'm addicted to these seltzer ass waters, man. Is 
think I don't play the Enigma Drake. Perhaps I do. No branch walkers. It's Sultai. Could be Sultai control. Typically, I want a little defense for whatever I wind up playing out. So I think I am going to once again just look for one of those defensive cards. Still think that's correct, though. Ludovico. Now, on one hand, it looks like we're doing nothing. But on the other hand, our drakes are already 4-4s four because we've been so proactive about placing spells into our graveyard. Pikumunga gifting five subs to the chat. To Ayla Ju... Ayla Juti Lehman. Oh my gosh. That is the most Swedish sounding name. That is so great. Stream Chef, Zaire, Halcyon Hush, Bolden, hey Ayla. Did I pronounce it reasonably? Set the course. There's a spell pierce. So now, now I can play a Crackling Drake and defend with a Spell Pierce, right? Oh my gosh, JTS is me getting competitive. Gifting 10 Tier 1 subs to LeBlanc, 233, Rock Picker, 83, Cyanite, Sithos Eon, Guardstar, Zystem, Edvix, 112, Sire Rocco, Pricey One, Jimmy Lee Jr. Excuse me. So I think the play here is we just crickety crack our crackle and drake and out of this situation we'll make despy jesus christ let go stop it son of a bitch hey hey cast down gosh why why are you just such a persnickety kitty all right we, we got a cat. We got a lap cat. She wants to hang out in the lap. She loves it. She loves it here in the lap. You a good cat? The answer is yes. Never think otherwise. This is my buddy. This is Desperado. Or for short, Despy. Um, Sheriff was the first cat name chosen. Sheriff is just an unbelievable cat name. And we wanted something that kind of like went with Sheriff. So we did Desperado. Which as it turns out, it's kind of a shit name. Desperado's not a good name. It's actually a really <laughs> terrible name. Get that out of here. Get that out of here. Despy's really cute. Desperado. So very quickly, Desperado. Became Despy and we never looked back. And now the really fun thing to do is when people are like, Did you name your cat? After the song Despacito? We're just like, yep. 100%. There was a song named Despacito that was somewhat memey, and that is the name of the cat now. I've seen things that would break someone like you. I've seen things that would break someone like you. <laughs> Over a grown term. Good name, her deputy. Sheriff is just such a good name. But Despy, Despy's actually who you are now. You're Despy. And you're so happy, and I love you so much. Dove down. Look at me, I'm protected. Meme name for a meme animal. Oh, you're a climber. Now, do I just smash this face? I think the answer is maybe yes. What we need to do is we need to opt first. Okay, yeah, so I mean, th this just 1000% has to be the play. All right, we must kill this so that way our drakes need answers. Let's do this again. What? What, 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 what? What just happened? Did I accidentally click on this? I don't think I did. L 
like, like, that was weird. It just, like, skipped straight to the end of my turn and blasted through. Can someone clip that and let me know? I mean, right now I have this cat and I'm, like, doing a show live. But the, not only did the animation not show, but, like, it skipped the end of my turn. It's not the animation. Animation's whiffing is less what I'm concerned about, and more, why did it pass through my whole fucking turn? Because we would have just won right here, right now, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. We would have just blasted through. Glad we're running this card. <sighs> Look at this, we played around finality. This needs to adapt right now. We're gonna, we, we're literally going to be up against Growth Chamber Guardians for life. Should click on end of turn instead of attack. Oh, that's weird because I was I, I'd like sent the attack in, and when I clicked here, I thought it was just attack. Let me see if I can actually open this up. Oh, I just ended the turn. Oh, shit. I just literally hit the end turn button. Dude, that's so funny. <laughs> so I need to do... I need to do this first. Because right now... This has nine in there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So there's eleven other instants and sorceries. Wait a minute. This is a better play. Because Sedana's climb can only buff one of them. Yeah, so it's that it, when the animation didn't go off, I just instinctively kept hitting the thing, which had apparently already turned to end turn. It all happened so fast, man. It was fantastic. Really? What? Oh, man. Nice. All right, well, now I can swing in for 12. So now it's, it's very, very, very hard to lose this. The fact that that all happened pre-combat. It's freaking cat, man. Yeah, she's so cute. I'm going to have to move you in a little bit, because, like, this is the way my body's naturally facing, and I'm like, time to play video game. So, now there's almost no way to win, unless that's, like, a Vivian Reed or some shit. Yes, our opponent lost. Ludovico just straight up loses. Can't adapt this. There's no combination of adaptation and Hadana's climbing that can do this. Shoot this guy. Chuck this. Submit. So what can possibly be played that can become flying and deal with this? Uh, unless this is literally uh, cast down. 
Ever tried a standing desk? Uh, yeah. It's okay. I would hate it for streaming, but maybe I'd love it for streaming. Ow, ooh. I want the Star of Extinction, yes. Do I want to play a slower game, or do I want to play a faster game? I feel like the entrancing melodies and the Star of Extinctions are what I want. Is that really what that deck's about? Didn't see any branch walking. Against Adonis Climb, this does seem good. Alternatively, we can get the more durable threats of the Rawls. We should go slower. This feels, this feels correct to me. This feels correct to me. It's really hard with all the, the crisis, the hydroid crises about. Okay, I'm gonna set you down, sweetie. Okay, it's time to go down. Come on. Come on. Hey, stop biting my knee. All right, come on. Come on, get up. You got, stop being so cute. Why are you so cute? Hey, don't chew on my knee. Stop chewing on my knee. There you go. Uh, ooh, now that's an opening. So I don't have converted mana cost too? Yeah. <coughs> oh my glory, that's a good one. Go ahead and pay two life. Represent shock here. It's tasting you. Alright, you got me. I miss Despy, I miss her too. That's why my nose is running so much. It's all that missing of her. God almighty. Alright, let's take a peek. Yeah, yeah, I mean this this gives me a play to do this turn. One mana Terry. Perfect. Terry, you did your job. <laughs> you big flying meat man. Toot toot. Oh, Jesus. Hello. It's me, your favorite friend. Counterspell. I'll take four, my friend. I will take four. <sighs> and X equals two. So I can Terry and Beacon Bolt. This. <clears throat> Goes in the graveyard, gives me an extra damage. And play Terry. We have one, two, three in there, so this is getting lower. No blocks. I think I can outrace Ludovico. Three more turns of pain from this and we die. You coming? Coming to town? Hoo-hoo, hoo-hoo. Mike the Knight says, an old 30-day project of mine turned to a Kickstarter. Thanks for an the inspiration. Would it be appropriate to share a link? Mods? 
Mike the Knight, I have a question. I actually think I know what your thing is. Is it edge? Is that what it is? Edge, pure utility? Cutting matte notebooks with design utility in mind? Is that what this is, Mike the Knight? I literally, I have it open on my browser right here and was looking at it. That is awesome. Yeah, you know what? Fuck, I'll post the link, man. Check out Mike the Knight's Kickstarter. I got you covered, dog. I saw you tweeted that, and I was like, this is fascinating. Read through it. That's right, I'll plug your Kickstarter. It is the Edge Cutting Matte Notebooks with design and utility in mind. Uh, I will stress that I, I haven't uh, I haven't read it at all. Yeah, and I'll dive that down. I think a land has already been played this turn. This could be a Vraska's in response. What? Did someone makey a mistakey? I think someone make you a mistake. -y. If it's land, that does suck. No blocks. Pass. Land? Gotcha. Yoinks. Zoinks like hey scoop. So we do this first main phase. See if we can get another spell. And note that once the beacon bolt goes into exile, this is a 6-4, but this is only a 5-4, which is why we did that pre-combat. <sighs> <sighs> oh my god, that was close. Mm. Uh-oh. Crazy boy doing works. Alright, so if we can peel a spell, we can win. If we cannot peel a spell, we don't win. Hi, my name is Sean Only Drake's Plot. Dum da 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 Show me your Sarah Angels, baby. Is it Drake's? Hey Isla. Yuti Lyman. How do you how do you pronounce your name? How do you pronounce that name? That's like such a name. Oh my god, Terry's. So many Terry's. I'm gonna keep this. Oh, Big piles of shit. Pay two life. Oh. Do it, Terry. Do it. Oh, my God. It's pronounced, as it's written, lull. Such a butthead, Isla. In that case, Eva Juti Lanen. It is rather straightforward, Day 9. You simply look at it and then pronounce it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Mm. I cannot. Be I cannot believe I'm about to say this, but Eric is giving away. I'm. I'm stunned that this. These words are coming out of my mouth. Eric is still giving away. Match the Gathering Arena Selesnya Conclave deck codes. It's a single-use code. It literally gives you a whole big old pile of cards, man. I'm not scared of Terry, man. You got a Terry, I got a Terry. We all got Terry's for ice cream. Oh, this can't really help you pronouncing because I'm bad at English, sorry. Damn. Damn. <laughs> Rats.
It's pronounced just how it's spelled, Daymine. S-H-A-D-E. Oh, okay. All right. No, it makes sense to me. Makes sense to me. Does it make sense to you? Makes sense to me, man. I, I'm literally just going to Enigma Drake this. Like, this could get Lava Coiled, and I'm sort of okay with that. I think we have the exact same deck, which means the only person I can lose to is myself. The only SJR says, thanks for the great content. Day 9, love your life, smile, and positive attitude. Keep up the great content. Oh, woo. Why? Why, thank you. Enters tap. I'm going to, uh... I mean, we gotta, we gotta wind up hurting stuff at some point here. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be a dive down. Which I believe, believe myself to be fine with. No attacks. No thank you. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. N not enough mana. All right, we have successfully slain a Terry. I'm a dignitary who is known for slain a Terry. Ah. Resolution commencing. I win in this matchup when they go under me. Alright. No attacks. Just be sad. Sucks. How do I even board in this matchup? Entrancing melodies, maybe? Mm? No. This feel a little weird here. Disdainful strokes feel kind of nice. Maybe Rawl? Maybe Rawl? Rawl? Maybe Rawl? I don't know. It's more targeted removal. Does Niv seem good? Not so much. Not so much. What are my, some of my early game answers? Tormenting voice, huh? That's kind of a funky one to have. Is this one running Arclight Phoenixes? I don't know how you'd have enough room for that. Good job, Terry. Take it all. Shocks seem pretty terrible here. I feel like doing like this, right? I feel, I feel like doing something like this. More ways to deal big chunks of damage. Big, chunky, juicy damage. Do I want to work in a Niv? Melody. Entrancing Melody seems pretty... Bad. Niv, I fear, would just become the chumpiest chumper in the whole world. Entrancing Melody, there's one value that Entrancing Melody has. I can pay three mana and snatch uh, a Terry. Um, but this is literally the deck that's full of dive downs and spell pierces and things like that. So I'm looking for ways to kind of get around that or to have repeated value. I mean, the thing is that... There's a lot of suggestions to do things with 5 plus mana, but I gotta be fucking careful about that. I kind of do like the idea of trying to figure out how to work a Niv in here. I mean, maybe even this? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like this better.
I don't think we have enough time to get a Planeswalker up and running. Like, I want you to see what happens between turns 4, 5, 6, like what that sort of arc is. Great. Different strokes for different folks. Five man is bad, which uh, but Niv, which is six, is good. Pikamonga says, I don't get the logic. Sure. Um, here's the logic. A, a Planeswalker needs a lot of time to start getting value. And by time, I mean a lot of turns. All right. So, for instance, I'm going to play Rawl, and then I can maybe zap for the minus three just this turn. And then next turn, assuming that it lives, then I can play... Um, I want this. I have nothing else I need to do. Good. And the next turn, if he lives, then I get to draw a card. And the next turn, if he lives, I get to draw a card. Right there, there's there's multiple turns that I need. Whereas Niv Mizzet is strong on the turn it's played. Like it gets shit done right now. I think I do want to dive down here instead of a spell pierce because I think there's more flexibility in that other spot. So, even though Ral is cheaper, it is slower than Niv Mizzet. All right, Terry, you're going to need to do a lot for me, my friend. Ugh. So, that's that's why I say that Ral's too slow when I put in a more expensive spell. Radical idea. That's an interesting one in there. Are we running the Black Red Land? It is a utility for um, Discovery Dispersal. Occasionally, we will be able to play the Dispersal. And that's it. Oh! I have found my target. It's only four targets, so we're only running two of them, so that's fine. Also, uh, we're 99% going to lose this. We're all in on Terry. So... Speaker Manga, I hope that logic helped make sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. Spell Pierce! I don't give a shit, man. Discover and draw all you want. So land draws are brutal. Seems okay. I have drawn one, two, three, four spells, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Doesn't seem all that unlikely. Sipalfe. Boom! Terry's coming to town. What up? Um, coming up, so you better get your Terry started. See now, if we if we draw a Niv Mizzet, we're just like, yeah. Oh my gosh, an Allen Negator. I think we just permit that, right? Hmm. I just need to I just need to do this, man. Terry, Terry, quite contrary. Sitting on a teleferry. Alright. If we can't win with Terry's alone, I don't know how we can. Oh! God! No! Oh, this sucks.
fuck. Blah, 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 blah. God, we are so fucked. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I literally need to draw precisely Niv Mizzet for us to win, yes. Okay, draw another one. <laughs> what is it? What's going on? I'm not I'm not giving you lap space. We're not selling leases on the lap. So I need something like some combination of draw, lava coil. I, why do I even try to imagine? <laughs> uh, okay. Good game. You got us. Yuck, duck, frickety frock. Alright, let's queue up. I will know. I don't think that we drew disproportionately poorly in that game. I don't think we drew disproportionately poorly. But I do believe that we drew worse than our opponent did. Ugh. Okay, there it is. Yeah. My turns one and two, I largely want to be devoting to damage and draw. That's just a nut draw right there, man. Snip is it even in the deck? Don't see it in the deck master. Uh, if you click on sideboard, you can see it right there. Pay that life. Hey, that's nice. That's J Roll says, good luck, Sean. Hey, thanks, Master J Roll. Death. To Iver J. May she never recover from the shocked Terry. Spell Pierce we want. Do we actually want another Terry? I think no, I think we just chuck a Terry, huh? Set the course. Make it happen. So is this mono blue? So I'm going to go out on a bet and suppose that we are up against mono blue because I see Terry, I see Charter Course, I see Island, I see Island, I see Island. So I believe she is mono blue. I'm going to claim... There's mono blue in her blood. We're going to Enigma Drake swing in. We're then going to chart a course first. So nice and cozy. I'm honestly feeling pretty cozy. Absolutely not in one million years. I do not permit that. Mr. Lawless just thinks I look so cozy. I am. I'm so cozy. Tempus Genie. I'm shocked that resolved. Rika for the win says, Oh, lol, I somehow completely missed out. This is a new series. Yeah, I saw you asking about the shocks, and it was one of those things where I was like, Boy, I've been there a million times. Where I'm like playing a game, and I'm like, All right, Niv should be coming. And I said, This game one of you best of three. <laughs> oh, shit. All right. Let me click! Let me click! Wow. 
This is some unusually bad luck on a mono blue dex part. Bum bum bum. Let's hope she plays a creature so we can shoot it and kill. Sad. Neither slowed up nor sped down. Our rate of winning. Yo, man, I see. What are some good resources for playing cheap MTGA decks? I like MT. Uh, I, I use MTG Goldfish. It has a budget deck section. There's a lot of good deck sites that have a budget decks section in there. Seems completely fine. Not a lot of changes need to be made. Not a lot of changes need to be made. I am really enjoying this deck. I am really enjoying this deck. A lot. Should I say it again? I am really enjoying this deck. Feels like there's a lot of shit going on. Yep. Uh, I really like decks that feel like when I make decisions, I can have better results. And when I make poor decisions, I can have way worse results. I like that. I like feeling my inputs strength in the matchup. Anyone have any curious obsessions? It looks like, no. Nah. I think I absolutely want to discover dispersal right away. Do I want one lava coil, two lava coils? I think I actually just want two lava coils. I think I just leave those right there. Because she has three cards in hand. Now four. Now three. And our presumption... We're just slowly emptying cards out of her hand. So now, Siren Storm Tamer can sack itself. Or not. Terry's gonna go ahead and do the Terry Beats. And all the while, we're gaining more mana. And getting to a point where we can up Terry. Up Terry sounds like some terrible name for upvotes on a shitty subreddit. Alright everyone, give me your up Terry's. Great. I'm gonna go ahead and one for one it. Perfect. And this is where the heat's gonna kick in. Where next turn. Oh my god, there's oh wait, no. Wow, there's almost no spells in here. That's right, it's been a whole bunch of creatures and creature-based counters. So now we have four in here. We can we can adapt Terry. I'm gonna go ahead and opt first and just kind of see what we got going on. That's a very good draw. Go ahead and play the island. We're going to get in one free point of damage here. Careful. Drop this puppy here. Perfect. We got another Terry. Love it. So we wanted to opt first, see what we were up against. Now that we have a big blocker Drake, things are going to begin to get a little harder for our opponent. The opponent has nowhere near enough. So this is three, so now we actually have enough, so. Swing in. Oh my god, she she literally had like the worst possible draw. I feel a little bad. But then again, I'm ruthless. There's few things I care about more than stars and bars. Give me my pips. Give me my pips. Gosh, she drew terribly. Not even remotely close. The Siren Storm Tamers are the more important one for us to block. And then we just swing back and win.
All right. We just, we just wobble around, Platinum 4. It hurts. It hurts. Ooh. TL564 says, Dan, I've been playing Magic for a fairly long time. Was there a favorite meta for you? Now. Ever since Guilds of Ravnica came out, I was like, oh, yes. The meta is so deep. I mean, it is so rich. It is, I mean, it's just beautiful. That, this is such an, a disgusting opening. Because we turn one Terry, then we can discover our way into what we need next. Hello. Are you me? That's really the question I'm trying to identify. Let me go ahead and take a peek here. Oh, God. So I do want this mountain. Discovery Dispersal is actually just so damn good. Bang. Because I really feel like next turn, I'm going to want to do something along the lines of, like, shock. Discovery. Oh, you jund! <laughs> Alright, it's a glow spore ding-dong. Got it. Copy. Alright, I'm going to want some defense for our good Enigma Drakey boy. Enigma Drakes are fine. Scram those fine cards made by fine people. But it's not necessarily the thing that I want desperately. It's the thing that synergizes well when I incidentally pick it up. So this is Jund Graveyard Interaction, huh? This also could be a Chain Whirler deck. Alright, I'm just jamming them all down, man. Main phase in it, poking for one, no problem. For any of you who are unfamiliar with the uh, Poison Chain Whirler deck, I mean, it's actually pretty sick. The idea is Goblin Chain Whirler says that when you enter the battlefield, you deal one damage to everyone. There's also the Status and Statue card. Status and Statue reads you can give one of your creatures Death Touch, so you play it. The deal one damage goes on to the stack. You then respond to that by giving your Chain Whirler Death Touch. Now that it has Death Touch, the deal one damage clears the entire board. And you have a... You have a whole cleary board. So let's see here. I don't think I change anything at all. Plausibly a spell pierce. Plausibly. I don't know that deck very well. It does seem to be very creaturey. Because I feel like this is a Jund good creatures deck. So... I don't know how many small zomboids there are. Like, we just, we literally, we literally treated our opponent like a toilet in that last game. So, in that regard, I don't think I necessarily need to change that much. Disdainful stroke, my eye was gravitating towards... This is a terrible hand. And I've, I've been able to identify it. I'm going to throw it back, and I'm going to be happy with this. One Terry is good enough for me. A prime attribute of a successful Terry is the ability to draw a chart of course. Trade out your lands for Lich's Master. You got it, buddy. 
dive down. Set the shock. Make it happen. So our gin card is Charter Force. I'm going to go ahead and leave up the usual spell. Pierces, dive downs. Jade Light Ranger. I believe our opponent does not have that many spells. So I believe the spell pierces are cuttable candidates. I mean, I'm not going to... Why the hell would you leave that there? Okay. Drill bit. Alright, you got it. Um. No. No, 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 I'm a moron. I, I, I don't want that. How many times does Day9 get to be a dummy? He was a dummy only once. This is a bit of a pain in the ass, ain't it? But it's actually not that much of a pain in the ass. One, two, three, four, five, six. This swings in, this gets played for one, I spell pierce, all the mana gets burned. Here comes the drill bit. Two can be paid. But now we're going to be able to adapt to Terry. So either Terry, either we get the opt, which permits us to get something better. No! Yeah, that makes more sense. Our opponent's going, uh-oh. Oh. oh. Four. Seven minus four is three. So now we can... And then I cast this. Then we're going to need to put one spell into the... Oh, fuck. Actually, that's, that's probably a little better. We're going to get super low here. But recall that I am made out of balls. Alright, this is maybe the worst play that I've ever made in life. Minus three? Okay. Okay, that's pretty bad. That's good, because if we had focused on the adapting plan, we would have been effed anyways. This is kind of a nifty little deck. Amazing. Unbelievable that I'm capable of doing that, huh? Uh, I just realized I made a mistake. Never been known to do that. We lost. Alright, let's think about this. I mean, this this lineup actually seems pretty grand. Right? It seems like a pretty grand-ass lineup. Yeah, I think I should play a little bit more intelligently. No fire, no steam. It's a, it's a weird ass deck list from our opponent. Super tight. I love John and Graph, man. When do I want to play? First. When do we want to play first? Now. <laughs> Alright, we, we, we don't shock in anything at all. Uh, I think I say no and no. Alright, we already have a shock. It seems rare that I'm going to want two shocks. When I could just run an Enigma Drake down and be awesome instead. Wild Growth Walker is a pickle. Alright, I think I just need to accelerate and try to protect this at all costs and go all in at all costs. 
Because anytime a wild growth walker comes in shocked, it's just screaming, I have a jade light, I have a jade light. Okay, all right, you got it. You got me. We shoot once, increasing the damage by a bit. Because I believe that we are in a race scenario, and then we do this to try to earn ourselves some protection. We have screwed the pooch, and it's okay, because sometimes you do a little pooch screwing. What are you going to do? What? All right, Flipmeister. You bastard. Dish, 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 dish. Holy shit. Oh my god, in the top 13 cards, there's three wild growth walkers. Ugh. I think I'm dead. I think Flipmeister has roasted us, man. I think we are part of Team Roasty Toasty. I mean, is this it? I think I, think I just go as all in as someone can ever go. So I think we actually, um, I mean, we're going to take so much damage. If there's any more Jade Light dudes, please don't have a Merfolk Branch Walker there. <laughs> Fuck! Ah! Oh my god. Okay, I mean, I literally, I can't beat this draw. I don't think there's any deck that I can possibly have other than Esper Control that can beat that draw. I mean, that is, that's amazing. No, you have lethal. Kill me. Yeah. You got it, man. All right. Psych. You got tricked. Big piles of balls. I can't believe it. we're going to actually lose this game. Holy cow. I mean, I, I don't know what to do about that. All right. No, I mean, well earned. Well earned. You got it. You got it, man. You got it, buddy. You know, the, I think the biggest thing that we struggled with in that uh, matchup was trying to figure out how the hell to sideboard against that. Like, we saw almost no Wild Growth, Merfolk, or Jade Light runners in the first two games. Yeah, that's a fine starting hand. Mountain, and then Discovery. Mountain for Shock, Island for Discovery. Alright, Watery Grave. What do you think about that there, watery grave, huh? Set the course. Make it happen. Hero de Precinct 1. Hello, Terry. Alright, so we are up against... Mid-range Esper, the Esper beatdowns. Welcome back, good to see ya. We bonk first, we chart the course a second. We need to anyways. Some sort of Thought Erasure or Mortify. Holy Hero of Precinct 1. Okay. This is a matchup where I'm less interested in Lava Coils and more interested in Fiery Cononods.
I mean, we're gonna win in this spot, but cut the lava coils, put in the fiery cannon odds. No, you do not get to draw any land. And then do we have lethal? Because this is 5 and 6, this is 11 right now. Can we get 5 more? No attacks, because we have the Drake. Perfect. We get a land. This is a disgustingly, oppressively good situation to be in. Okay, okay, so we have Roasty Toasty. I don't think I actually want to do that much of a change. Like, I think I actually just try to outrace. I think it just makes sense. Most important things are the timing of my spell pierce. It's plausible that I want to go long in this. It's plausible that what we say is like, cut all the little Bernie spells, go for a more long term. Uh, we, we've pretty much been up against a very narrow set of different decks. Which is pretty interesting. What now? Seems okay. All might. Dude, can I just say, My Hero Academia is actually pretty great. Maldarian says the draw has been pretty weird last few games. I do think a good chunk of it, Maldarian, is that I'm maybe misplaying some of these draw spells. Chant de Chopin asks the following Question raisonnablement. Says, Has there any been consideration of switching spell pierce for Quench? I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna state yes. Uh, and Spell Pierce is strictly better than Quench. It's me, a thief of sanity. Is that so? Uh, it's strictly better to go for the um, Spell Pierce because I want to be able to like play a Drake on turn five and protect it with a Spell Pierce, or play a Enigma Drake on turn three and protect it with a uh, an Enigma Drake on turn four and protect it with a Spell Pierce. So we we actually delay us ourselves a whole turn. Because this deck is all about, do I have a Drake? Is it protected? Good. Win immediately and desperately. Because we just barely have enough tools. By the way, we're charter coursing after. Um, so that way we can possibly draw a island. Good. Thought erasure sucks, but he's okay. This is a good card for our opponent to get rid of because our Terry lets us draw two without discarding. We can swing freely with the Terry and then just draw two. Crackling Drake is, I think, the most reasonable choice. I'm a hero! C'est parfait. I'm gonna chart a course once again. Wasn't that a thing of beauty? I mean, this is probably just way better to do this, yeah. I mean, the fact that Terry has let us draw, has let us draw so many cards, even after the thought erasure, it's four cards against our six cards, more likely two to three spells against our four spells, and this is great fixing and this is great value. Hey, Link, happy 27 months. Love the number 27. My birthday's on the 27th. Not a chance. Didn't our opponent already know this? Is there something I'm missing, All Might? All Might. Ugh. I mean, we don't really have the protection for it, and I think I'd rather be more mana efficient in this way. I actually think I really do want that Drake.
We now have one, two, three, four, five things in there. So Terry's about to get big. Totally not a deal. Totally not a problem at all. Can I... Does this work like... Got him. That matchup feels pretty easy. Sheltering light. We have a Terry, we got a Shock, we got an Opt. Plenty of opportunities to draw. My name is Day9, I'm a member of Get There City. So we're, we're, we're shocking this land in, we're paying the two life, because as always, if our opponent is some sort of more aggressive deck, like, uh, you know, an Esper aggro deck, we do want to be in the position where we can shock the, the thing. Given this opening with nothing, could be that we're up against an aggro deck. I just think I just want that run out, right? We got some scary Drakey boys, I think. I think, I think, I think. So, I mean, this is, this is actually probably, this is actually probably some sort of Esper control deck, and we're going to test the waters here by slamming a Drake down. Grand. So, we already have a good game plan against Esper control. I'm super happy we're up against Esper control right now. Hello. We're just playing Drakes, just hurling them out. Ah. I'm um, expecting end of turn Chemister's Insight. This is really good. Esper Control, weirdly, winds up in a lot of situations where they just seem to not have that much cards or card draws. Is this guy a glorified Tucker? It's time to tuck. Yep. Tuck, tuck. Fox spot luck. The Grumble versus card draw on Esper often feels like search for Escanta or bust. Yeah, you telling me, man. Alright. Saw through our evil plan. Taking a peek. Hey. Taking a peek. Yeah, I'm just gonna play this on this turn, right? You're running low on answers. Hoping I can run high on threats. Guess what? I have a spell pierce. Damn it! Alright, Fox Spot. Oh, precognitive perception. Oh. Oh, these are all really bad cards for your pal Sean to see. I will use my unique strategy of hit the face. Precognitive Perception it has such good audio to it. Boy, my bluffs aren't working like they used to. Maybe we just concede here. Maybe we get the hell out of here. No, nope, what up? It's me, the crackling Drake. You know what? Let's just get out of here. It's going to get countered. All right. You got me. Good game. GG. Woo! Alias V. What is going down, Alias V? All right. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Bye, 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 bye. Bye, 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 bye. And then we want disdainful strokes, treasure maps, Niv Mizzets, and Raul Izzets. Uh, do we want the Entrancing Melody? Nah, there's no creatures. I'm keeping one Beacon Bolt here as, like, uh, 
Lyra Insurance. How's the games going today? It's pretty much 50-50. Pretty much 40-40. Oh, God. I need a neck massage. I need it. Ha! Drunk Terrence says he turned me into a monster. I bought eight packs of lemon ginger seltzer. Trader Joe's today. Yes! Lemon ginger seltzer water! Mm. It's amazing. There's all these things that, like, I am being way more cognizant of as I'm growing older. Um, and that is the following. I, I'm i noticing that as I'm getting older, there's things like, okay, you know what feels great? End of a long day, sitting down on your sofa, putting on Netflix and having a cold beer. You know what, that's just, that's just like, I am a goddamn adult and I'm going to enjoy my goddamn adulthood, right? That's one of those sorts of things. <laughs> and Dan Plantain says, I've heard this country song. <laughs> yeah. You know what is the downside to that kind of behavior? You get a tummy. Tummy time. I think I do want land. I think, do I want an opt? I don't really know if what I'm doing is good. But then again, I don't know anything in my life. Yeah, you get, you get the tummy, you gain weight, right? You're drinking those calories. And so I was like, what? I was like, what can I do? Uh, this could be quench, but, you know. Perfect. I think I actually just need to be unbelievably careful and always play around cast downs and all this sort of BS. Uh, I think I have to respond like this. A lot of people are boarding in Thief of Sanities for this very reason. Uh, obviously, we would die to another cast down or to another Vraska's Contempt, but Thief of Sanity isn't the most horrible. But now that we board in our big scary voice. But anyways, I, I, I love the sort of like cold beer after a long day sort of thing. Fuck. Fuck, fuck, fuck. But. I found that if I just drink carbonated water, life is amazing still. By the way, I, I, I'm, I'm screaming the F word here because if we had waited one turn. On the, oh, thank God. If we had waited but a turn on the um, Enigma Drake, we could have protected it. Shit. I'm gonna have to swing in at that, huh? Decision time. Hmm. Decision time. I, I can't stand that the card that our opponent got was that. That hurts a lot. I need to be able to defend against this asshole. Or this asshole, excuse me. So we, we can't attack. Attacking is bad. We could Dispersal. We don't have the black mana yet. Good, 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 good. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Well, let's see what the wind blows in. Oh my god! Fuck, man! Oh god, that was like such a shitty sequence! Oh my god, dude, fuck. Get me out of here. Oh, that's such garbage, man. Fuck. Oh my god, that hurts so much. That's so stupid. Rage quit more like quit right at the moment where we had zero hope of winning. <laughs> fuck! Oh my god, Thief of Sanity. Okay, now I'm going to come all the way back to what I think was the mistake in that game, which is that I just threw out the Enigma Drake on turn three because in my mind I said, it's fine. I'll just put out the Enigma Drake, and if it dies, I can play a Crackling Drake. Well, then our opponent played a Thief of Sanity. If I would waited one turn, I could have played the Drake, then blocked it and blocked the Thief of Sanity for a turn. 
it was that kind of... This is totally fine. It's that kind of turn-to-turn -turn efficiency that we provided our opponent. And by turn-to-turn -turn efficiency, what I mean is like... Um, we let them spend all their mana, because they were able to cast down for a full two mana. Then they spent all three mana on the Thief of Sanity. Then they spent all four mana on the Vraska's Contempt. But if I'd waited a turn, we would have been in a better situ situation. Now, the fact that our opponent then got Ral sucks, because we have four huge threats. Two Rals, two Nivs. And then the fact that, like, our opponent was able to just peel those answers. It was just so perfect. Oh. If this gets dived down, totally fine by me. Not a big deal. No! <laughs> I'm drinking seltzer water and the pain still isn't going away. Ugh! Fuck, man. Fountain 1979. What an old fountain. Alright, so this this says to us that Fountain 1979 uh, doesn't have a way to deal with countery thingies. So I'm going to go ahead and just slam down a Lava Coil again on the Terry. This two mana could be available to counter creature spells. Spell Pierce would have been cast last turn. The Wizard's Retort is not enough mana for that. Alright. No problem. No problem at all. God, and then... Oh, Ryle Straightener and Niv it blowing up straight into... So many moments of agony. Alright, so now I'm going to begin to play out my Dracos. Could be, could be, plausible that our opponent has some answers to it, but whoa, doesn't. Mm, opt. Dot by do opt. I gotta blow this thing up soon. Because right now, there is four in the bin, four mana out, so this can get... This can get Shia la buffed. Three instants and sorceries in there. Okay. Well, I can maybe plausibly defend for at least a moment. Merfolk Tapster, more like. Shit. Chart of course to draw is so savage. Gotta kill Terry, man. Just saying. Alright, well, I mean, the play is clear, right? Let's shoot this, Terry. Let's shoot this, Terry. Alright, hey, what well, do you know? We're winning the race. Bonk. <laughs> Ramadan says, Do you ever just think about unit in and smile? Yeah. Ah, yes. StarCraft 2 is the fucking best, man. You know, one of the qualities that I love about StarCraft also, uh, re uh, you know, shows itself in Magic, which is I love that there's thi this, all the stuff on the board. Well, I'll talk about it after sideboarding. You'll never know. She even fire, cut this, cut this, and then we're good. Yeah. I There's a lot of games out there that purely due to functional necessity, like the most important quality of a multiplayer game is overcoming the following fear, okay? I'm going to go on a rant, and I love this rant. It's about what I call multiplayer engines. There is a fundamental psychology in humans, which is, okay, I need to stay safe until I'm good, and then it's time to act. These are people who surround their base and cannons until they've built up the right army and attack in StarCraft. These are the people that sit and camp in shooters and don't want to move, right? These are the people that, uh, you'll especially see this in board games, where they try to stop threats before they impose threats on other people. Uh, 
you need some mechanism in the game that actually makes it so that your brain stops focusing on that fundamental human psychology and instead interacts with the other people. Because if you don't overcome that psychology, you have a multiplayer game where I'm fucking sitting here hiding in my corner trying to get ready, and you're sitting there hiding in your corner trying to get ready, and nobody is doing anything with each other. It's like when your parents try to set up a date for you, and you're sitting eating dinner like, I don't want to be here, and she's sitting there eating dinner like, I don't want to be here, and nothing's fucking happening because there's no romantic engine that makes any sense there. Same with multiplayer games, right? You need something that brings each other together. Uh, and I talked about this in the context of Dota Auto Chess previously, but many games, um, this winds up being a relatively I don't know, it doesn't seem that good. Um, fuck. So a lot of multiplayer games have what I'll call a loud multiplayer engine, right? So much of the game is about just functionality. Such as, you know, Counter-Strike, Offense, Defense, Overwatch, Offense, Defense. Um, blah, 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 blah. There's just all these functional elements that live in these games. They're not bad. Not bad by any means. But um, in a lot of games, the, the field, the play field, stays pretty much the same. In Overwatch, your hero doesn't grow and get new abilities and become way more different as the game goes on. And I know a little bit with the alt meters and... Oh my god. Can we chart a course? Can we just get our way out of here? Do I spew a dive down here? I think maybe yes. Alright. There's a lot of stagnancy. All right, Rocket League, your car is the same little car the whole time. You can do the same little stuff the whole time. It doesn't change over the course of the game and evolve. I love in StarCraft, I love in Hearthstone, like this board, or not in Hearthstone, uh, in Magic and StarCraft. Uh, do I? I mean, I gotta, I gotta shoot the guy, right? Die. I love in Magic how this board is building, constantly growing, constantly changing. Why am I doing this on my turn? I should have done this on Fountain's turn. I'm, pro I'm providing my opponent an opportunity for mana efficiency. Ah, this is why I shouldn't talk and do stuff at the same time. Damn, damn, damn. I love that when there's this story that's being told on the board that's growing and changing and evolving. It's becoming more cool and interesting and dynamic over time. Ah, yeesh. If this gets countered, I'm just going to burst into big ol' frowner tears. Kind of helps if we can do this. Helps maybe a teensy tooch. But yeah, there, there's very few games that kind of have this growth. Oh, fuck. Kind of have this on battlefield story that's changing and growing and evolving where concrete elements change. I recognize that in something like a match of Rocket League, there's, oh, early game I was being, in the first few minutes I was being a little more defensive. Then I realized he had this weakness and I started to exploit it over the course of the game. That's a much more abstract form of change. I like when there's concrete Look at this thing. We're coming a different thing. Hello. I need a jumper. Two fish juices. What about economy and CSGO? Uh, yeah, it's a little more in between, right? It's not 
it's not doing big per permanent changes and evolutions that are sort of represented out here. It, there is a, a sort of abstract, uh, or I should say a slightly more abstract, because it's not concrete, right? Or, fuck, my word choice sucks today. It's not that it's a sharp divide, right? Obviously, there is some change in... Uh, this says that if... Yeah. Lose all our abilities in his blue wall. Okay, so I can chump that. Like in Overwatch, your ultimates do go up and do go down, and there's a sort of management of that. There's things like managing your boost and... Oh. Things like managing your boost and Rocket League. There, there's a lot of different uh, things that do have some change. Uh, an economy in CSGO is a bit of a stronger version of that. Strong version of that. But I mean, like, StarCraft and Magic... I mean, especially StarCraft is even way more on the extreme end of that than Magic. I just love when there's games where there's the thing that we have that we're building and changing and growing. I mean, this is part of the reason why a lot of the single-player games that I really enjoy do have that sort of quality as well. Things like the simulation-y type games. Surviving Mars, love that game. Frostpunk, love that game. Uh, City Skyline, love that game. Although that's uh, much more of making something pretty, but still, fucking love that. Uh... God, that was a good starting hand minus that thing. Ugh. I am keeping this because I have double shock and the one true land, but I think I should have mulligan last game as well. They are billions. God, that was a fun-ass game. That's good. Uh, we're going to go ahead and main phase this so we can get another land. Fuck. All right. Ugh. Terry. I love buildery type games. I mean, uh, don't get me wrong. I love other actiony type games. Like, I play a reasonable amount of Rocket League again. I'm playing some Dead Cells, which is super fun. Obviously, I play some Dota, which has, you know, it's sort of in between. Not again, not as extreme as something like StarCraft or Magic. I fucking love video games, man. I love games. I love games so much, man. Playing games is the awesomest. Decompresses. I recently got him back. Got back into Factorio. Forgot how addicting it is. Yeah, man. At least says, did you try Anthem Day Nine, or is that not your jam, really? Uh, I I've heard a lot of negative things about that as a game. I've heard a lot of people say. Gameplay was fun, just not a lot of content. And so I'm like, oh, okay. I prefer games to have content. So based upon that, my interest level for Anthem is pretty pretty much a 2 out of 10. Die. I've heard a lot of people describe the game as a 6 or 7 out of 10. And in my opinion, your game should be a 9 or 10 out of 10, or a 1 or 2 out of 10. I feel like it should be a very polarizing experience. Well, not that it should be, but boy, I think that's way the heck more preferable than just the sort of minutia, gentle, like, uh, it's, it's, I don't want to, I want a game that either entertains me, or I go, oh, I don't like this, I'm going to play something else. Rather than something that is inoffensive. Boy, I sure have a lot more success when I don't have a deck jam full of dive downs. So 
we need to do this to start curving into some land. There's one spell in there, so the Terries can get blocked by the Enigma Drake. Oh, is, is this it? Is this is this the army that I must defeat now? That's good. Glamwit says the flying feels very fun and is an interesting way to travel, but it's best played with friends, as with most games released these days. It has good gunplay, some interesting abilities. I would rate above Destiny 2, but it's just not my kind of game. I'm game based off Mass Effect 3's multiplayer. Please. <laughs> Alright. It's a completely fine run out. Uh, you got it, bud. This is not a threat, this is a huge threat though, because there's currently one, two, three things in here, so it's a one-off being able to adapt. Please don't be land. Oh, shit, shit, shit. I don't want to take that damage, man. Oh, come on, man. Hello, it's me, Terry. Oh my god. We were actually, like, very, very close to a victory in this match. I think I actually don't chump here. Depends on what our opponent does. I just, I just hang out for a turn. I should have chucked this. I should have kept the dive down. What am I doing? What am I thinking? God, should I have ever kept that dive down? Ugh. Oh, cancel attacks. No attacks. No more folk trickster. That's good. Oh my god! See, I just needed to keep the dive down. I don't know why I just kept the crackling drake. My, my head is not fully in these games, which is frustrating. I'm just getting interested in conversations and making really basic dumb mistakes, man. Ah! This has been kind of a frustrating day, man. There's a number of these games where if I had just taken a few more moments, thought a little bit more talked out loud about my thought process a little bit more then I would have been fine I would have won just two or three of these ones and I mean since you win two pips when you win the best three and you lose two pips there's a difference between like having eight to ten more pips right. it's try hard mode uh, got any more autopilot -y decks if you're splitting focus? I mean, the big thing is that I just need to be more diligent and just take my time, but I, I kind of wind up and just play stuff out mode. Okay. Alright, so we are 1,000 million percent going to discovery dispersal here. Dive down is good. Spell pierce is good. Which one do I want? Do I just want both of these? I think I want just both of these. Dive down is pretty important in this matchup. I hit this guy in the face. Bam. Okay, so, so I think we're going to be doing another Discovery Dispersal. This is good. 
Let's go ahead and take a peek. Again, I think I do want that. Lava Coil seems pretty good in this matchup. Sulfur Falls is pretty good. Myer51 says, I think you should cut the Star of Extinction in the sideboard for another Niv, simply because you have more than enough answers to the aggressive matchups that Star really shines in. Uh, it's pre pretty much for the Golgari matchup, and I think I would prefer a Star of Extinction in the Golgari matchup instead of a, a Niv. I think. It seems, it seems really rough to not have a Star of Extinction versus Golgari decks that get really big boards. Graspel says, is Discovery really that good? It seems weird to me that Drake's run it. It's actually unbelievable, and I think that that's maybe the number one most misplayed card that I've been doing. I actually think that I kind of want to chuck this now. I should have been more thoughtful about this. I guess I'll keep it. I'll keep it for consistency, huh? It's really a... It's a fantastic card because... I can place lots of spells into the graveyard and buff these Enigma Drakes while drawing. That's the big thing. That's the big, big, big reason. So I can, like, Discovery, put a bunch of things in the graveyard, and pa-boom. Kadwa, hey, happy 69 months in a row, Kadwa. <laughs> yes, yes. I have discovered the play. Right, cool. Nice. I think I think the biggest problem with this deck is me. Isn't that sad? Isn't that sad? Ouch. Find and finality. X equals four. Good. You know what? The more lava coils, the better. Huh? Wooshy dooshy, wooshy dooshy. I think I might cut the shots and keep the coils. Still working on my sideboarding plan in this matchup. Okay. I think that, like, I think my plan is to bring in this, cut that, bring in these, and then cut these, right? Or maybe like that. I'm not really that sure. I really struggle with my sideboarding plan in this matchup. Blood Crypt. Yeah, we want one black source for the Discovery Dispersal effect. The Dispersal requires one black. Infrequently, we can actually use that as a nice play. Quadwatch says, is there room for a Notion Rain in this deck? Or are you generally too fragile? We just don't have any black sources other than the one single Blood Crypt. That's really the big issue. We are an Izzet deck. We are red-blue. With a single swamp. Not a single swamp, a single Blood Crypt. Which provides black mana. Alright. Opening hand, show me what you got. This seems like the most reasonable opening hand of all. I swear to God, if you play Land War Elf, no! Alright. Set the course. 
make it happen. Ah, Promisan says, so happy to be back in chat. Now that my Prime sub is back up after using it on GDQ. And now, thanks to cumulative sub streaks. I think, uh, okay, so for efficiency's sake. This might look a little weird, but I want to slow this game down, you know? This is where my opponent is just like, Wild Growth Walker, and I'm like, ugh! Gleamwood says, I'd love to see a Thrash slash Threat in this deck. Well, what would you cut? What would you cut? Let's take a peek first. Don't need none of that. A die to this deck running a thud. Thud, I think, is a sweet ad. Lame hit. What what would you cut main deck to get a thrash thread in? Goodbye, Terry. You were loved. Always know that. I feel like doing this just for the draw, even though it's completely unprotected. Because I need to get some better draw pieces in there. And then I can protect the Enigma Drake. And make it all about the Enigma Drake. Oh, big piles of tears! Let's tear this place no apart. Ow! Was Maybe it actually is better to do nothing. Because then our opponent will wish not to Vivienne. Screw it, I'm not going to use it. Alright. Always lucky. Good. Ha. I've seen worse. Don't want that. So, I mean, we have, like, a lot of stuff in the graveyard. Like, these are 6 fours right now, but... I need some protection. X equals four, no problem. You got a threat, I got an answer. Man, this is, a, this is about the play that I think I have. I mean, I have more than enough to adapt this for one. Be great. It's just melody for nothing. Uh, I just I'm not quite sure how to play this matchup out. No, I don't want those blocks. I'm gonna miss you so much. I'm just gonna fucking miss you. I'm gonna miss you, man. I did it. I solved the game. Alright. I got it. Maximize Velocity is one that I'm kind of interested in as a card. Look at this! So, I don't know what I need. Probably Crackling Drake into land into Star of Extinction. Perfect. Until my opponent plays immediately thereafter. A removal spell. Vraska's Contempt. Boy, I'm gonna call on it, baby. Call on this shit. My name is Colin. 
calling this shit. Um, I think I think our plan was for the most part good. Maybe we want a beacon bolt instead. No, I think the two mana dudes are good. Uh, there I, perhaps is an argument to be made for getting more disdainful strokes in there. But I think we just ship it. Oh my gosh, it's 4.30 already. Where did the time go today? Oh! I think being on the play seems pretty good. That's a nice one to have. Alright. Island, go. These entrancing melodies are not feeling so grand to me. I don't want to just put in maximized velocities, honestly. In, like, removal heavy matchups, just, like, maximize velocity and just get it out there. Alright, we might be screwed. Bloody Sky says West Coast is the best coast. California's fine. It's a fine place. It's a fine place to live. Take a peek. See you later, Star of Extinction. You'll be missed. Dive Down could go out. Duress seems like an odd choice in this matchup. I feel like more removal's better, but maybe I'm wrong. hang out a little bit here, maybe try to crackling Drake our way back into this game. I find this matchup tough. Do got a way to turn on the crackling Drake, I believe. Yeah, I mean, I almost feel like instead of the entrancing melodies, just running the fiery cannonades would have consistently helped us. Well, I mean, it's not like we have drawn the entrancing melodies to even feel what their impact is like. There he goes. Maybe the answer is, don't worry about these small dirtlers. You can block with drakes. With a crackling Drake first, see if we can get out some sort of nice little treat. Nope. I mean, we're working our way towards that Star of Extinction, which is a positive moment in my life. Vivian Reed. I mean, if you, if you want to kill the crackling Drake, I mean, you got it, but... Star of Extinction is actually going to be unbelievable here. Take another pile of damage. My my god. This is going to be perfect for when our opponent refills on the crazy boy. First things first. Draw. Maybe we can just get a shock so we don't have to... Feels okay. This feels okay. I mean, land hydroid crisis is. Wild animals I like. Okay. People, not so much. Okay. Sometimes restoration means retribution. You got it. Bing bong bong. Get thee gone. <sighs> Not a lot of land on the side of Raphael Campos Conti. Oh my god. That is painful. We're gonna get an island right off the top. Perfect.
I mean, this this could be strong evidence for why we do like Star of Extinction. possible one. It resolves. Take that action. Put an island out there. Shuffle it up. Perfect. I'm just going to show you. I'm just going to show you what I got. Two Vivians in the bin. I think that's all the Vivians that there ever were. Elf is gonna kill us, man. Raphael Campos Conti. This this elf is actually gonna kill us. <laughs> Terry? Am I sideboarding wrong against this matchup? <laughs> Why run Banefire when you can just hit in the face with an elf five times in a row? Oh my lord. Fuck, man. Ugh. All right. I need a little break. We've been playing this deck for like three and a half hours and literally going nowhere with it. Ugh.